Give the jurisdiction where the suspect is wanted. Make of car and license plate. Good tips equal dollars. 1-800-273-TIPS. That's 1-800-273-TIPS. Treasure Coast Crime Stoppers works for you. That's 1-800-273-TIPS. Funded by the Office of Florida's Attorney General. You are listening to WSTU, Stewart, Jupiter, and Indiantown, Martin County's Heritage Station. It's time now for the Casey Ingram Show on WSTU. The opinions expressed are those of the program host and guest and not necessarily those of WSTU. WSTU does not endorse products that may be mentioned. Any reproduction or retransmission of this broadcast is strictly prohibited without written consent of WSTU. It's time to call in with your questions and comments at 220-9788, 220-WSTU. And now, here's Casey Ingram. Welcome back to the second half of the show. I'm very proud to have Commissioner Eula Clark. She's running for re-election in Group 5, and we just had uh, Mayor Math... Mayor... That's a lot of M's here. Mayor Merritt Matheson. And and, uh, as we were signing off, he wanted to hand out his phone number. We ran out of time. If you need to contact Merritt, uh, 772-233-8406, 233-8406. That is his personal cell phone. I'll post it uh, after the show as well, but uh, please reach out. He's there to answer any questions. Um, Also, I want to remind everybody that it is hurricane season. It is time to store your boat. Make sure you have a safe place to keep uh, keep it in case there's a hurricane and you know the one of the best boat storage facilities around and i would say the safest place is along the okeechobee waterway at indian town marina very well protected inland and it's a perfect place to store your boat during a storm there are also a do-it-yourself or full service boat yard so you can get work done on the boat while it's there but folks i can't stress enough at least just Call out there and get your reservation. Then you'll have peace of mind because once a storm is named, I can pretty much guarantee you, you'll not find a spot in this town. So call them up today, 772-631-3272, 772-631-3272, and let them know you need some hurricane storage. So Miss Eula Clark, she, uh, she says that she's committed to clean water, balanced development, urban infill development, restoring and preserving our historic buildings and neighborhoods, maintaining safety, neighborhood restoration and beautification of great and awkward parks, and major thoroughfares, transparency and governing in the best interest of all city residents, and maintaining our home rule and maintaining our vibrancy as the county seat. Eula supports the arts in our community, and she supports reading and other programs to strengthen our youth and their families. Eula, welcome back to the show. I think it's been a little while since I've had you, maybe even since the last election. I can't remember. So... Always good to have you here, though. And, you know, let's just start out. Why are you running again for city commission? I am absolutely so glad to be here this morning and to tell you that I'm running again to just continue to work hard on some of the projects that have been started by our city commission, the ongoing things that are happening, and just to serve, to continue to give back and to make sure that we have a great legacy for our future families and future so residents in the city of Stewart. And I just want to continue to do a good job and serve our residents. So folks, uh, we are not taking calls for the Meet Your Candidate series, but I will be watching my Facebook page, which I'm trying to load up from the last show right now as we speak. And I'll look for comments or questions for Eula on the Facebook page. So please join us there at uh, my web or my Facebook, the Casey Ingram Show Facebook page. Eula, let's talk a little bit about some of your accomplishments. Uh, what are you most proud of as you have been a sitting commissioner here in the well, last few I, years? Well, I've been a sitting commissioner for... Uh, since 2011 2011. and one of the things which just so happens because we're talking all about time here yes time on the commission time serving with people and just time working with people and one of the things has been uh when i came on in the beginning and was the vice mayor in 2012 we started working on our strategic plan and that was something that i pushed forward we got that done 10-year strategic plan and it's time to get that plan updated and when i look back at the achievements of the strategic plan and the things that we've done during that time 
I'm like, wow, we've just achieved so much. Our septic sewer conversion, the way that we've been continuing. Yula, that's a big one. I'll stop you for one second. That septic to sewer was huge. That's something that's helped our river so much. Yes. Talk about that a little bit more so folks understand really what an accomplishment this is. Well, uh, we've set out to basically have the infrastructure to have every home and business be able to hook into septic and sewer when they have the opportunity to do so and to have a payment plan to do so. And I think for residences, a payment plan probably averages about $8,000. And they, and every single basin, I think we had like five segments of the city, and we've gone through and we've strategically done all the streets, everybody, so whenever the opportunity comes, people can get in, they can have the grinder in, they can have all the most updated, um, innovative things that the city has done in order to deal with that. And that, not just that for dealing with literal water and septic out of the home, but also to deal with things that run into the river, that gets into our lagoon, to have baffle boxes, to have things along the way, to filter and to go through. And it's just a, a comprehensive system, and it is a foundation. A lot of people don't see it, right. and but it is a foundation to really get one of the linchpins to get our river um, and our waterways clean. Our Indian River Keeper has always said, you know, every little bit we can do to help the river, that's what we need to do. Well, I say something when, and I think back in 2013, we had the Army Corps come here and yes. I greeted them as mayor of the city yes. of Stewart. And my thing to them was an old thing, which is a mix of my heritage from Jamaica, as well as with Scotland, because we have a lot of ties with our, our whole British colonial thing. But Every mickle makes a muckle. So every little thing that <laughs> like you can that. do, every mickle makes a muckle. I'm gonna remember every that. little thing that you can do to help the Indian River, even if you keep that cigarette butt from going somewhere, it helps. As a matter of fact, we just had a City of Stewart cleanup a couple weekends ago, and you were out there with Team Eula. Yes. Uh, it was so wonderful to, to see you out there, and we were picking those I've, things I've, up. I've cigarette been, butts, I've plastic. I've been an advocate. I, I grew up in an era where we are constantly, I grew up in, 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 in the islands and ecotourism, just, just appreciation, being a steward of the environment, right. you can't help it. Right. And so that is a natural for me. I don't have to shout from the rooftops. It's something that I live, it's something that I do in my gardening, in the, in the things that I do with friends. It's constantly take care of where you live, take care of the environment truly a, a service member to the yeah. community, whether you're elected or not. Yes. Yeah. Going back to the strategic plan, tell us a little bit more. Uh, you said it's time to update it. What kind of updates would you like to see with the strategic plan for the okay, city of Stewart? Okay, so the things that we're always looking for is how to best deal with various areas, whether it's recreation, whether it's areas to deal with communication. One of the big things that I think we really need to focus on is this whole idea of working with the county, city and county working. People are concerned about roads, people are concerned about traffic, oh, yes. people are concerned about um, things, even the, the idea of what the city's doing to specifically help waterways and is there something that the county's doing that may be pulling away from that. People are concerned about development in general. And for most times it's not just, it's not that there's overdevelopment, it's just that people don't understand how things happen and understand how, what the density of a place is and what the potential density could be. And that we're actually developing at a lesser rate than what we technically could have um, done. So those kind of things, making sure that neighborhoods are involved, that we have input in, involved from, from people in, in various neighborhoods and enhancing those neighborhoods. All those things need to be in our next 10 year strategic plan so that people know that all these things are covered, the waterways covered, the idea of how to deal with people who believe that maybe the city should be doing housing, but we understand that we encourage the development ideas and we encourage a partnership for housing. I think the closest the city has done to developing housing is way back when, probably 62 years ago or more, wow. there was public housing that was brought into the city. And of course, we have our lots that we have 
sold and we have partnered with um, Habitat for Humanity. Okay. And those have been done, and we're always working. If somebody, if a developer comes in and they're working on certain things, there are different things that happen in order to ensure that a project will come forward and that if it will assist with workforce housing, those kind of things. But we're always trying to work to partner on those. So definitely doing a 10-year strategic plan to make sure that we'll have the budgeting and the funding to do certain things. What will happen when we get financing from our our downtown reinvestment area, what will happen when we get our ad valorem taxes and how we distribute that, how we work with our police force, not just for your standard uh, law enforcement, the enforcement part of law, but the other part that will prevent crime, crime prevention, right. mental health work. Those kind of things need to be added to our strategic plan to make sure we have an effective, seamless system to administer our, our community and make it work and, and bring in that vibrancy into our community so that people recognize. And, and there's a lot of changes that have going on, and you've seen that over the last decade. And, you know, I want to jump back real quick just to the uh, subject to sewer conversion. One thing that uh, Ms. Clark said, Eight thousand dollars—that's incredibly cheap. I mean, to go on a normal to be converted over, it's it's probably three times that. So the city of Stewart's been able to come up with this system that puts them on the grinder system. It's huge, and I think you have the majority of rest uh, residents that have already joined it. Yeah, the join, participation is amazing. And, and of course, with with um, with uh, um, I'm not going to hold that number, but you know, with um, taxes and with other things, right. there's a, an over payment over a period of time. In fact, I think we have, a, I can't give the specifics, but we had a resident who had paid certain funds and by the time they looked at what they were paying, it was like an enormous amount of money, probably like $14,000. But um, some things had to be corrected in order to facilitate right. what needed to happen on their property. But um, uh, initially, those were some of the initial numbers and people, if depending on how long things right. are stretched out, you know, that it will happen. But varies. And it, your it's, property it's, it's values increase yeah. doing that. And things will increase naturally because of cost of living and so on. Everything has to. <laughs> Look at that. So that's my disclaimer. There you go. Just okay. in case somebody says, well, I paid 50 000. Right. <laughs> Generally speaking. Uh, Carly Knott, thank you for tuning in. She said, um, we're going back to the development, and we'll, we'll focus on that here in a second, but she said there is definitely overdevelopment in the city. Let's talk about that a little bit, Eula. I think that's probably the biggest topic of this election season is just all the building that's went on and that goes I, I that idea of saying that there's overdevelopment again that goes to knowledge of the details and I don't have all the list of projects I actually had a little list that I've used at chamber and other things to present that shows the projects from all the ones on the north side all the way down along US 1 all the way down to the ones just done south of, of Walmart that haven't even, they're approved, but they haven't even been, they're in the building process now, along with, um, I think you, you spoke earlier to, to uh, Mayor Matheson and their projects along Kenner Highway, Indian Street. Mm -hmm. However, all of those things, I think, and the idea of overdevelopment, and this is something that I'm pushing, and if I do get back to serve the residents of Stewart, I will push this. This is to have a, uh, community outreach so that people will actually be able to know and of course we need to get a, a wonderful hopefully the, the best um, community development director or planner for our city uh, that so that we can really work to get out there and to have um, I think Martin Kears has Martin Kears has a, has a project where you can go and learn about the the water system the the development system well we just it's similar to chamber leadership we just need to have that so that people understand and they get to learn about development and learn exactly what is happening and when people say that there's overdevelopment it is there has been a lot going on, but there have been so many projects that have been in the pipeline and they've just started to come forward. I think of some projects which are on along the, the Green River Parkway right now, right. which are, that was a new road. There was a lot of objection to that roadway. That roadway is in there. There are projects coming on. We're thinking of doing a fire station up there on the north side of town. 
all those things, people see them and they said, ah, oh, the city of Stewart, all these developments are happening. And when you look at the numbers, some are as low as eight units per acre, some are 14. They're different because of the different um, density type in the development. But I, if, if there's overdevelopment and if we need to look at it and talk about it, and this has been a great thing for this election, it has come up, then we need to look at it and address it, and we need to address it with the people. And so we will be looking at it, the ones that are approved, they're there when things come up and people need to know what's in our comprehensive plan, how it works, what happens with density changes, what happens with land use changes versus zoning density interchange, all those things need to happen. And I think that that having a way for people to learn and to provide input will be a good thing to do. I have a question for you um, about um, the density, but first, uh, Carly, just she had a question. How long have you lived here? I have lived here since 1985. I came to Martin County to work with the Martin County Board of County Commissioners as a senior planner. I have a master's in urban and regional planning from the Florida State University in Tallahassee. I came here when Rule 9J5 was instituted by the state of Florida, where all cities and counties had to start working on making sure that their plans met the Rule 9J5 um, concurrency plans, so their traffic, their water, sewer, everything, land use changes had to be evaluated based on looking at traffic, water, sewer, school, all these kind of things, and there were concurrency requirements on the Rule 9J5, and I came here, I worked at the Martin County Board of County Commissioners until 1993, from 1998 to 93, when I left and went to law school at now the University of Florida. <laughs> so I've had both, yes. Seminole and Gator. Yes, yeah. You're, you can't be partial to one or the other, yes. right? <laughs> Whoever is winning is a wonderful. There you wonderful go. There you team. go. <laughs> That's right. Always, always side with the winner. That's a good way to go. Um, Eula, I wanted to ask you. There, there's been one development that people talk about a lot. It was, it's over by the courthouse, and apparently, nine hundred. Is it the Elizabeth? I think so. The nine hundred square feet is considered okay, a half the unit. Small, the smaller units. Yes, yes, yeah. the smaller units. Nine, they're nine hundred is considered a half a unit, so they actually could put two units. Like well, they've put what they've put. I think it's like 47 or 49 units in there. So that's what it is. But that allows, and and, the, and it still didn't put up the density. I don't remember. It, it didn't, over, of course, it's not going to be over the dense. We work, we absolutely. Because that might be, I don't know what it is on that but property, but it allows but them to have a per smaller acre. unit so that when people rent, the people don't have, some people don't need two bedrooms. Right. Especially if they want to live in a downtown area and work in a downtown area, they're a single person. They're a professional. They just want to have some place to live, some place nice, and be in a walkable area and be a part of an urban atmosphere. And the the downtown area is the place to put something that will provide that kind of a um, hundred percent. Which I don't I don't think they mind the smaller units, but how did it get classified or win? I don't even know the half a unit. Why wasn't nine hundred square feet considered a full unit? I don't I don't know if you. Uh, that, with that. that is something that, well, people are saying that it's a half a unit, but it's, it's because of the way that um, we worked it out uh, in, our, in, our, in, our, in our code to, to, to make sure that, um, I guess, you can, you can have a, a, a larger unit. That particular, those having corner units or, or just small units allowed... Um, you said 900. That, the, I, that's what we worked out for that. I'll have to go back and, and, and double okay. check. Right. But that's, uh, and I know that we have a, a candidate who has been um, very um, vocal on, on that issue. But um, it met our code requirements, and it's something that it's not causing an overdevelopment. It's still within the code requirements. Again, we're speaking. It just, it just afforded, it just had the ab availability to be able to have smaller units so that if somebody wanted to, to rent something, they didn't have to rent two bedrooms. Okay. And, and have it so it, it's there. But it's still it's within the requirements. The requirements. 
And again, we're speaking with Commissioner Eula Clark. She's running for re-election in Group 5. And Eula, I've known you a long time. Back in 2013, I... I saw you out there advocating for our river, and, it, and you have ever since. You've yes. always been a huge advocate. Let's talk a little bit about your accomplishes, accomplishments and what you're most proud of uh, over the years serving the city of Stewart. Well, there, of course, the strategic plan has been something that has, I've loved to say that has guided the city, and I like to deal with guiding principles to help us go through. The, the, one of the other things, I, I've always participated in the arts, and I think Stuart has the arts right there in the middle of it. Yes. And I've pushed to have, and I've asked, and my commissioners agreed, to have a once a month um, art uh, moment at the city of Stewart, and it has brought so much information and so much. I think when people see that it's only three minutes, but oh, it deep. keeps the vibrancy going. It keeps people reminded that we and it. And I think that working with the arts council has just brought so much to people who come here, not just for fishing, not just for shopping but the arts are an important part of our city not just our downtown area but our entire city and it gives a future for the young people to know that they can participate the other thing that is most recently i have i'm african-american and the east Stewart area has been a part of of Stewart for a long time yes. and People have been clamoring and asking, when can we see some redevelopment? When can we see some recognition? You're right. Uh, during that time, I have pushed to get some historic places noted, churches, different buildings, and continue to do so. And we just started the East Stewart Historic Advisory Committee to really get that history together and to let people know that this is an important part of our city that needs some attention, that has a lot to offer, and and that has a lot to return to its vibrancy and its greatness. And I think that that's something that it, that's going to be just really you blooming are, and blossoming. That's I'd love to do a future show on that with you uh, and whoever could come from that, that yes, committee. Yes, there's Miss Faye James who's been working really well it's with our, our development department. Important. And she has a great committee of people. They just had a workshop this past Saturday. I was not able to be there, but they just had it, and it worked out absolutely and, fine oh. to get the information that they need to get those stories out there and to create their, we're going to be working on Guy Davis Park. And we just got $4.7 million you know, from the ARPA funds, we're going to be working to get projects done with that. Some of that is going to be in that area. Oh, that's and fabulous. It's just absolutely. So many. You're asking me why I'm running? I'm running because we have a lot of work to do at the city of Stewart. I want to be involved with that, and I want to hear from residents and work with them and get projects implemented that are going to continue to make our city just be a great place to live, work, and play. Well, and to document that history like that, once it's gone, if history's not documented, it's gone. So I think that's so super important, and I, I love that you're doing that project. And the other thing I have to say that I love are all the bronze sculptures around mm -hmm. town that have been added, the birds and whatnot. Yes, yes. we've, we've it, The arts are important. To truly. Stuart. And like, again, every mickle makes a muckle. <laughs> right. On the, when you sit under a shade tree... And when you sit along uh, Kru Fraser Creek or Kruger, it doesn't matter anywhere. Right. And you notice something, it's like, wow, that is absolutely why I'm here in Stewart. That's why I want to come here. That's why I want to visit here because this is special. This little spot that I'm on today is a special spot. And we want people to, to see that and recognize that when they see the arts that we have here. From Lady Abundance in Haney Circle right. to everything that's in Memorial Park and right. other things that are going to be in Memorial Park because we're we have another phase of Memorial Park to finish. Oh, and I can't we're working, wait! We're working on that so that we can have more Beautiful shows and, and more activities there. I want to jump back to the development for just a second and just make a comment. Um, I think one of the things that's been a perfect storm with COVID and now the increase in prices with real estate and that's why these developers and landowners that have been sitting on vacant land for so long now's the time I mean it's, it's kind of been a perfect storm so I, I know that as commissioners I'm sure you've been inundated with so many projects and you know there's things that are out of your control and that is the perfect storm that's happened yeah. so and we have a lot of balancing to do we have a lot of balancing to do and people want yes. their property rights and we have balancing we have rules we have regulations and then we have our public who always are gonna say 
This is Change what is politicians tough. need to do. So right. we have to really work on it. Um, tell us how people can reach out to you. I, I know you just they come around downtown and they find you. But seven two two six three three eight eight six. That's my cell phone. I have my law office. I have my email. Uh, Eula Clark for Stewart. <laughs> and um, a Gmail. And then I have a, a website which I'm opening up. And it's going to be Eula Clark for City of Stewart Group 5. Uh, they can look that up. And um, it's www. So, you know, I, they can reach out to me. My cell phone is good. And I have a, my own personal Facebook page. Sometimes people reach out to me there. Um, you're, you're around town. So that's, uh, I wanted to uh, share with you. Kenny Hinkle, Jr., thanks for tuning Kenny in. Kenny Hinkle. <laughs> Kenny Hinkle did a video of me with a river, and I just appreciate uh, him. Kenny, I will have to reach out to you. He says, love me, Eula. Love music and art. Oh, so. okay. <laughs> Kenny Hinkle. Thank you. Uh, Carly says, yes, E. Stewart needs revived for sure. And uh, she agrees, but she, she's talking about the development and property yes but we yeah, need to we, keep it small are, that's something that needs to be addressed and i think education of the public is going to go a long way and we're going to go hand in hand we're not going to overdevelop no we're not but we are going to address all the issues that people are concerned about real quick we're, we are running out of time this topic could take all half hour but bright line the bridge okay okay with the with the with the marine industries yes yeah we're it, we're just gonna well, there's been a lot of work going on. There has. And there we're, we're going to continue to push with that. I think a new bridge is the solution. Yes, yes. They so. have to make it stronger. And, and yeah. Yes, and I think the city's been trying to talk with Brightline. And, you know, you, you're doing what you can to advocate for that new bridge. Yeah, definitely. That's what we've been doing. So how are you uh, responding to folks that are also talking about all the traffic and the congestion? I mean, that's, you know. <laughs> and traffic and congestion comes from people coming from Port St. Lucie, all of Martin County. Stewart is a beautiful place. People want to come here. And we just have had, we have the, I don't know if it's a bad luck, but you know the road right, situation. Right. It's right there. Everything just converges together. And it's it very does. tough. We don't have a beltway around the city. And we're just going to have to continue to work with each other, be more courteous, plan your trips. and um, Don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush. And as much as people don't want to have a lot of, uh, quote, unquote, multifamily, if you want to have a little transit system, you need to have the density in order to have a transit system, right. in order to have a parking garage. It kind of, the balance, That's goes, right. it has to come together. 100%. And Carly Nott says, and Brightline needs to pay for the bridge. I agree with yes, you, Carly. Yes, I agree with you. So, and talking about traffic coming from other places, I know out on Becker Road, there's so much growth out there. And yes. then they do, they travel into Martin right, County. Right over the bridges into Martin That's County. That's right. Right into the city of Stewart. Not a lot we can do about that. Yeah. But we, like you said, have to deal with it, slow down and, and be courteous. Again, we've been speaking with uh, Commissioner Eula Clark. She's running for re-election in Group 5. Next week, we will have her opponent on, who is William uh, Laughlin for Group 5, City of Stewart Commissioner. Eula, as always, a pleasure. I appreciate you coming Thank in you. here and answering our questions Thank and you so much. talking about the City of Stewart that I know you love so and much. And I'll send you the details on the Elizabeth so that you can have the explanation Perfect. for yourself. Perfect. I appreciate you that. You can share it with others. I certainly will. I certainly will. I know that's questions that seem to come up a lot. So thank you again, Eula Clark. We are out of time today, but it's always been a pleasure, and I wish you well. And uh, if you support Eula, make sure you go ahead and uh, help help her out with her campaign. Thank you. A great program you have. Thank you.